Janista, back at it. It's been days, but my daughter was in the hospital. I know you've been watching my videos, so most of you know. Or you heard it through the grapevine, something like that. But she's doing a lot better. Her oxygen levels are high enough for her to be home, on medication at home. She stayed in the hospital for the last few days until they brought her O2 levels back up to 96% or higher. That's what they have to be. If you have asthma, you can use an inhaler at home to get the rest of the 4% up. Or you can just breathe normally like that. If it glitches below 89%, it's not good. You have to be in the hospital. My daughter's was actually down to 78% the day I picked her up at school. So we know she was in distress. I knew right away. My son, that's 13 now, had lung issues when he was born. So whether I wanted to learn about O2 stats and uh, how many pulses per minute each person has and blah blah I had to learn all about it whether I wanted to or not so I knew when I picked my daughter up and her pupils were humongous like that black circle in her eyes was either nowhere to be found or so big I couldn't even see the brown around her eyes like mine are hazels but hers are brown so clearly her eyes were pinned I think it's called but all you could see was like black circles walking at you. <laughs> and then the rest of it was like grayish, like cloudy eyes. And she couldn't even see me. She walked right on past me and kept it moving like I was a redhead in front of her. And I clearly wasn't. I was talking to somebody else about getting Tay to go with them because she had an appointment to go to the doctor at 3 o'clock anyway because I knew her asthma was acting up and I was out of her medication refills for the nebulizer. So I was bringing her to the doctor anyway. Granted, I had known in my head, I'm the mom, I know, mother's instincts, my daughter wasn't feeling right. Period. We got to the doctor, nightmare, her oxygen levels were way down, stats the shit kept beeping, beep, 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 meaning she needed to be seen somewhere else besides that doctor's office because they don't have anything to help her there. So we had to go to the ER, and that was our first trip on two Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday was the first trip to the ER, where she then got sent home with just um, a regular inhaler right there because that's what the school wanted her to have for when she was at school, so there would need... Wouldn't be any problems again, blah, blah, blah. But after we left there, we came home. They had given her a steroid called prednisone, which she's also got right here. She's still on it. And that is a steroid for your lungs. It makes the muscles stronger because when you have asthma, your muscles are weak. Anyway, we're about to show you living well with asthma guide right here that she got sent home with. And I'm going to just give you an example of what is asthma first right there. Asthma is a condition that inflames the airways in the lungs, causing them to swell. The narrow tubes that air passes through when the airway is narrow, you can have symptoms such as coughing, wheezing, and chest tightness, which is what she had. In my video, you can see that my daughter was in distress. That was after we got sent home from the hospital the first time. And I knew she needed to go back because they're incompetent, just like the school. So they have no idea what they're talking about. They just make shit up to get you out of there and get the cash money from your insurance company. So anyway, I came home and I knew my daughter was still in distress. So that's when I did the video saying my daughter was in distress. So you can look at that. And if even if it's not a girl, a boy right here. So you watch. <sighs> See, but hers, when she does it, it goes into this big hole right here. Or her stomach was doing like some... Like, it was like... Like she was doing that with her hips every time she breathed. And you can look there. Like, I have to do that, like holding my breath. She wasn't doing that. She was asleep and her it was doing that. So I could tell, regardless, mother's instincts, yet again, that she needed to go back to the ER. So, that is what we did Wednesday night, and we proceeded to stay there all night long, and I had to get the kids up for school the next day, because I have other kids at home. That's when I decided Greenfield Emergency Room Department had no idea what the fuck they were doing. They were just talking in circles and giving me a fucking migraine, and I was not in the mood, I had no sleep, I was starving, and I was miserable, and I just said, okay, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to take her home. Like, you guys are doing shit, and I need to talk to her dad. He's at work. This isn't working. Deuces. And 
From there, I proceeded to come home, change my clothes, and her dad got home and took her to a base state in Springfield, which is 30 minutes away, but much better. They have a children's hospital, and they know how to deal with airways. That's where my son was sent when he was born, and then from there, he went to Boston, because Boston's a bigger place, and he was an infant, only an hour old at the time, so my daughter's six years old. It's a difference. She gets to stay in Springfield. They have a lot of... um. They have like a whole floor of just stuff to do with breathing and airflow and blah, blah, blah for kids. So, great place to go. I did a video with the kids. The playrooms there are off the chain. The playrooms are crazy out of control. So, the kids had a great time there visiting Nalia anyway, so it all worked out. But, my daughter came home and we have to control her asthma. She has this new mask to go on her in inhaler pump because she's going to start using the inhaler instead of the nebulizer like i said they gave her this one to bring to the school so we could have no more episodes at the school because i will sue the fucking school she's going to be on the prednisone steroid for a few more days and then she's got some other stuff here oh yeah this is another chamber like the one we've been using that we have to clean after every use because it's just something sweet in it and it will rot your teeth and it will get all nasty and blah blah so this is an extra one for the one at home Oh, some shocks. She got some hospital slippers. And this is the other one that goes on the end of this inhaler. This is another Pro Air Albuterol, just a regular one. This is what she takes every four hours for flare ups. Four to six hours for flare ups as needed. This goes on this. And then she's got one for school. And then she's on this every day as a preventive. So this will never happen again. Well, I can't never say never. <laughs> but, uh,. To prevent it from happening, okay? It's flow vent. Prevent the flow vent. Prevent with flow vent. I can make a commercial. Prevent with flow vent. For oral inhalation. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. For oral inhalation, flow vent, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. But yeah, this is a preventive inhaler so that she can not have the acute attacks. She has to take two puffs twice a day. So two times in the morning before school, she'll have this inhaler at school if she needs it for the six hours. Then when she gets home from school, she does this again. And she does this before school. Also the steroid. So my daughter has serious asthma that we have to control. I don't even know if I feel comfortable sending back to the school. I know last year she had two teachers that loved her to pieces. This year she's got a teacher that ignores her and didn't look at her from 11.55 a.m. till 2.55 p.m. Three hours they didn't even look at my daughter in the face while she was in class. So I also got an issue with them saying she's white and non-Hispanic because it's totally not the case. She is totally Puerto Rican and Hispanic. Ridiculous how they do this crap. So, again, they just did a little schedule when I left. That's not what I was showing you. I was trying to show you something else. Yeah, she has to take two puffs with the spacer two times a day, blah, blah, blah. All right, this is what happens when she flares up. She has trouble breathing. She breathes faster than usual. She wheezes, which she was doing all in those videos where I said she was having, she was in distress. You can look at those if you need to see. Coughing, especially at night. Trouble sleeping. She did wake up that night and tell me and Ari that she was having a chest pain. Getting tired and out of breath. Clearly, she was falling asleep in her own lap and having trouble talking. And at the beginning of a video when she was in the hospital, you can see how she was stuttering. This is a picture of the lungs and what happens, the muscle and the lining right here on asthma. That's what happens. Her muscle gets tight and the lining like gets all nasty and like mucusy and then she can't get the air through the holes of her lungs. That's what it looks like. See right there when the tightened muscle, this is a normal airway, it's a big circle. This is one that looks like my daughter's because she has asthma and clearly what Ari's used to look like. And when he gets sick, probably still looks like. And these are the two lungs in your body. And this is what they look like at a different angle. Blown up. Asthma's no joke. If you can't breathe, you can't get oxygen to your brain. If you can't get oxygen to your brain, you can't do anything because your brain is the function that controls everything. So without O2 going into your brain, there is no brain and there is no you. Therefore, I got to keep on top of my daughter's stuff. Last night, I barely even slept because it's said to give her a thing... 
uh, I can't remember what I was going to say, but I had to watch her sleep, clearly. And I, because I was nervous that if I went to sleep for four hours before her next treatment, she was going to be wheezing and I wasn't going to hear her. So I stayed up till five in the morning and then I woke her dad up to give her a treatment and then I was able to go to sleep. <laughs> but I just feel some type of way because it kept happening every time she comes home and I don't know if the cause is in my house. You dig? Because they sent me home twice and I had to go back twice. I don't want to make it three times. You feel me? I'm going to show you some of the things that they said asthma could, asthma attacks could be caused by. Tay. And then, yeah, Tay could cause an asthma attack. No. And I'll be right back. All right, this is another picture. What happens in the lungs? Your windpipe, your lungs, and your airway is a bronchial tube that goes through the lungs. Like I said, when the tubes get full, that's how your asthma attack starts. Here's a normal airway, an asthma airway, inflamed and then when you get a flare-up, it just gets smaller and smaller. See the circle? Until it closes, and then you're in trouble. Wash bedding in hot water to get rid of dust mites. If you think you have dust mites. So you cannot just dry to get rid of them. Dust mites have to be killed with hot water, then hot thing. Hey, animals. Fur or feathers... You have to replace carpets. Oh, Lord. Yeah, not in an apartment that you rent. Right here is the number one. Mold. Mold grows in damp places such as bathrooms, basements, closets. No vaporizers or humidifiers. That's what we have on the floor in there for AJ. These put water into the air and encourage mold to grow. So, therefore, the humidifier that my son uses has to go. Because we already have mold, which means we already have humidity in the air. Which is why I think now his asthma was so bad. So, we don't need that humidifier. That's got to go. And it does grow mold in it because the filter's nasty anyway. I already noticed that. But so, pollen from trees... And this one is one that I've never had in my house, clearly, but I've never even known it caused asthma either. Look at this. Cockroaches. Household pest. Also produces allergies. Keep your kitchen clean and dry. Leaky faucets. Oh, we have a leaky faucet, but I still don't have roaches. I think it's just the town that we live in doesn't have roaches or something. Actually, no, I did know someone that lives in this town that had roaches last year, but I've Animal never seen them. Daddy. Anyway, store food. I have centipedes, if you want to know about that. I just had one on my arm. Kill me now. 150 legs running up your arm feels like you had an ant farm on you. Wash dishes properly as soon as they are used. That's how to keep rid of cockroaches. That's not what I care about. I'm just saying cockroaches, pollen, mold. Okay. And that's it. So, mold... Pollen, cockroaches, Last year, dust mites, and animals. So, out of those five things, if I had to guess, it would be our animals and the mold because we don't have the rest. So, what we got to do is throw on a couple of these bad mamma jammas. I got some for the kids, Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, and I got some for the adults. And we're going to put these on, and we're going to have to... Get down to business. The dog's gonna need a bath, and the mold in the basement, and all that. You give it a little pinch around your nose, it's got a little thing there. It makes it the size of your nose. Works perfecto. Mama, Hashtag, we're 